uh, it was a great experience. It was, you know, taking the Imposo curve and trying to apply for the exhibits that we've seen so far here. It was interesting because it allowed us to think further into, for example, the Tibetan experience, which was, for me, the most remarkable one, where you've seen all this political work and very emotional attachment to it, but at the same time, if you analyze the experience as a whole, it could be improved. And I think the Imposo curve would be really helpful. I'm Manolo. I think the Panorama exhibit for me it's like the most amazing exhibit here because it wasn't meant to be an exhibition and I think it involves like people feelings like even though you live in New York or you don't live in New York it it really has like this touching thing for people that it's walking around. My name is Robin Reed and I'm really happy to have been here today. For one, um, to come to this museum and kind of understand what it is to learn more about what it is and what it is supposed to mean to the community. And once sort of learning that and seeing the exhibits here make me think about all the many things that can be done. And then also having the framework of this Inozu curve, like I don't know if it completely, we were not able to apply it to all of the exhibits here, but it made us, made me think about each experience in a richer way. And suddenly I'm thinking more about, you know, how these things are designed and what kinds of things you can evoke out of a, a visitor. And then the experience afterwards, just working with these guys and talking to them, each of our own individual experiences has been really, um, just helpful and enriching and applicable to this project, but I think it's making me think about all the different things that I work on in my work and my personal projects. Like, I think the curve is designed for museum, but I think it could really work for any kind of experience you're trying right. to design. So I'm Caroline. I was very surprised when I went in the panorama room that it kind of fit into some of the, um, the pain and the hope and even the action fields of the Imbozu curve. Um, which I didn't expect, I went in there just to see it. So for example, we talked to some kids there and they hadn't seen New York as one big piece and that made them want to kind of go and be everywhere that New York was. Um, for me, seeing the Twin Towers was a weird moment of um, pain and then, you know, other people were seeing things around the city and, ex and expressing stories and memories um, that they had associated with the place, which was a lot of reflection. So I saw a lot of things happen in there that I didn't expect. Um, the Tibet exhibit, uh, it was interesting, it ended a lot for me, and the pain and the and the reflection piece, and just a, maybe a touch of hope, but no action, I thought. Nahana Schelling. Um, I'm Yena. I'm Grace. I'm Bonnie. We actually had a great conversation about how the Inzogu curve applies in different contexts, and how in the context of an art museum, it might not apply yeah. necessarily, but it, it does in a sense, because you still walk away with some sort of actionable item of either you want to create art or you want to bring someone back to look at the same art that you just left in a very different way than you would from I think even this museum or memorial. Yeah, we have been sort of talked about for different cases sort of adjusting the curve a little bit. So um, in terms of art using the idea of um, of uh, you know, and not so much um, fear or loss or kind of pain at the beginning, but more of um, you you feel something, an artist making you feel something, and that sort of turns into um, a reflection point, and then maybe an action is you just change something about yourself, or you change something about your life, or you bring somebody back, or that kind of thing, so that so that that this idea could be used in other contexts beyond something like. A, um, a genocide museum where you want some sort of social action afterwards. And we realized that the point of reflection was really important and it doesn't really necessarily have to go through the, uh, what was the necessary third point? Hope? Yeah, hope and uh, um, action because reflection itself is actually action in some sense and then like in the death circle like it changes to each person's like inner thoughts, their views, and then maybe that itself is a change. Right. Like yeah. if we put more connection we're with the, the audience, because we want to like uh, attract more audience and then 
that Lynn can do more the reaction to our exhibition. Lana? Uh, uh, Nero. Uh, so we're actually not from here. Yeah, so I was I'm, born in Russia. And I'm all the way from Bombay, India. Uh, so we kind of... Uh, we relate. <laughs> yeah, we relate to this idea about a lot of different countries and communities being represented in Queens. And that's what formed the basis of our idea as well. It's about looking at this, uh, the globe that's here, the Unisphere, which I think you can see the reflection right here. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, so looking at that and from our own background and you know, the, not, I mean, not necessarily the pain, but al always the longing and the slight twinge of sadness that yeah. you know, we can't go back home for a while or we yeah. always miss home or certain small things from home or even what's happening. In, yeah. our, in our home country, and we're empathetic towards you know what why other people are here uh, towards issues that might be going on in their own countries that prevent them from going back, um, and sort of the amazing art and creativity that could come out of those places, which then are represented inside the museum. So each part, you know, um, on that on that globe is somehow presented here, and it's also represented in Queens. Most of the people in the world um, are represented in Queens each country kind of, so it's, you know, there's a relationship there. Yes, yeah, so I guess the, the idea was to, to sort of use that that globe and to work with the exhibitions that are inside the museum because the, the, the thread that connects them all is how international they are and how many different countries are represented. So this could be something that gets updated over time and, you know, um, just letting people know that their country is represented or somebody else's country is represented. Um, and then you could sort of walk through different parts of the world um, as you're exhibiting and looking at different things. I mean, even right now there's something, there's an exhibition from Tibet talking about the whole problem that's happening in Tibet and with China and uh, for all the, all the Tibetan people. There's something from India which is mainly talking about all the religious waste that yes. happens, especially during festivals and things like that. Uh, so, I mean, yeah, you know, a lot, everything, a lot, a lot of stuff from different parts of the world. There's something which is very, uh, like, New York and America based with the watershed yes. exhibition that's Absolutely. there. So, I mean, it's just a way of, like, bringing together all these different exhibitions. Mm -hmm. Uh, through an almost like a installation, yeah. I guess you could call it. And I guess the hope would be that, um, you know, just kind of connecting to one another because we're forced to live in a smaller place, even though we come from all sorts of parts of the world, we understand each other better. Um, and, uh, you know, also the action hopefully will be that people are a little bit more empathetic to other people's cultures and they learn more about them and what's going on and not just things that they might see from the news. Um, and also that, you know, because we do live in Queens, a lot of us, um, actually visiting those places in the world. So hopefully this museum sort of becomes like a starting point for all the different Queens neighborhoods that are represented on this globe.